welcome again in my course power electronic application of power system. So, in last few lectures I am discussing the application of SVC in various capacities to improve or enhance the power system performance. Okay. So, which includes the steady state power transfer capacity which also include uh, this uh, transient stability which also include the damping of the power system etcetera. Okay. However, the main purpose of SVC is to control the voltage wherever it would be placed. So, that is what the main application of SVC and in next few lectures I will be discussing that. Okay. So, how uh, an SVC could be able to uh, maintain the voltage of a location where it is placed. Uh, what are the factors involved in it and those things I will I am going to discuss in these few lectures. Okay. So, let us start. So, today I will discuss the applications of SVC. So, SVC in voltage control. So, let us consider we have a symmetrical long transmission line. Here our assumptions are we consider a symmetrical lossless balance three phase long transmission line. Okay. So, as usual we consider uh, this line is symmetrical lossless balance. It is of course, three phase even though I do not mention many times and it is a long transmission line. And let us consider voltage at this end is V at an angle delta, voltage at the receiving end side is T at an angle 0. Okay. So, what we will do is that we will put an SVC or we will place an SVC at the midpoint like this. So, this is the midpoint where we will put the SVC. So, this is the first assumption. Second assumption is that an SVC is placed at the midpoint of the line and it is also assume to be assume to be lossless. Of course, it is a three phase SVC you have to understand it is a three phase SVC uh, even though I do not mention many times, but you understand all these discussions uh, these devices compensators this transmission lines they are of three phase. Okay. Now, these are the our assumptions. Now, what is to be done is that what is our goal then? Our goal is to control the voltage at the point where SVC is placed. So, here uh, this point is eventually the midpoint. Okay. So, basically this SVC uh, the purpose of this main purpose of this SVC is to control the voltage at the point where it is placed. Now, we should also write irrespective of irrespective of line loading 
and voltage magnitudes at the both ends. So this is the goal of modeling the SVC is to control voltage at which this SVC is placed. Here it is incidentally the midpoint and this voltage control uh, action should consider and it will hold to be true uh, or it will maintain the control at irrespective of this line loading and the voltage conditions at the both end. So, this is what our goal. Now, what is to be done? The first step, the first step to do so is to convert the circuit to a Thevenin equivalent form. Okay. So, Thevenin equivalent is very important idea uh, which works for uh, uh, this linear circuit. It is usually taught in uh, basic electrical engineering course and I hope all of you are familiar with this. Now, in order to model this SVC, we will first convert the whole circuit into a Thevenin equivalent form. Now, what is Thevenin equivalent form? Usually, we, we convert a, a uh, very large complex circuit to an th Thevenin equivalent form and that form consists of a Thevenin equivalent voltage and a Thevenin equivalent impedance uh, there. So, basically you have to understand that this we are going to convert it to a Thevenin equivalent form where this will represent V Thevenin and there would be an impedance which will represent Z Thevenin. Okay. So, that is what we are going to do here. Now, the question is here we have to find out the magnitudes of V Thevenin and the magnitudes of Z Thevenin. So, that we can say that this represent Thevenin equivalent form of this actual circuit. Okay. And once you do so, then this circuit will work for any uh, change in the line loading as well as any change in the uh, voltage of the both ends. Okay. Now, to, to find to find V Thevenin, what is to be done? So, let us disconnect, let us assume, assume SVC is disconnected. and measure or and determine I should write determine determine the open circuit voltage open circuit voltage at the point where SVC is connected. Okay. And that open circuit voltage will represent V Thevenin, right? That is what the usual practice or that is what the usual convention that we follow. Okay. So, what we will do? Simply assume that SVC is disconnected from here and then measure the open circuit voltage. Now, uh, what would be the open circuit voltage if we disconnect the SVC? So, this open circuit voltage V T H will be nothing but equal to V m that is midpoint voltage and the expression of the midpoint voltage already we have determined long time before when I discuss the midpoint uh, voltage current condition. Okay. So, we know that this voltage is V cos delta by 2 divided by cos beta L by 2 at an angle delta by 2. Okay. So, this is known to us. So, V Thevenin uh, determination of V Thevenin is somewhat easier. 
So, this represents the V thevenin or thevenin equivalent uh, voltage which we are trying to get. Now, the second question is how do we find the Z thevenin? So, in order to find Z thevenin, what is uh, what usually we do? We have two voltage sources, one is at the receiving end side, another is at the sending end side. What we do is that uh, let us short circuit both the voltage source and find out what is the net impedance seen from this point. Okay. So, in order to find that what we can uh, do is that we, we know the relationship of this voltages and current among this midpoint voltage, midpoint current and the mid, uh, sending and voltage, sending and current also receiving and voltage, receiving and current this we know. Okay. So, we know how this sending and voltage is related to the midpoint voltage, we know this is already we derive the sending and voltage V s is equal to V m that is midpoint voltage cos beta L by 2 plus J I m Z c sin beta L by 2. Okay. So, from this we can find out the ratio of V m to I m V m to I m which is the uh, midpoint voltage to midpoint current when V s is short circuited. Now, if we do so then what we will get is this is basically representing minus Z c sin beta L by 2 minus J Z c of course, sin beta L by 2 divided by cos beta L by 2. Okay. So, this represents minus J Z c tan beta L by 2. Okay. So, that is what the Thevenin equivalent uh, impedance seen from the midpoint to the sending end side. So, the Thevenin equivalent impedance seen from midpoint to the sending end of the transmission line line is Z thevenin let us say 1 I represent this is by Z thevenin 1. So, this is the magnitude wise it is equal to uh, J Z C tan beta L by 2 if we ignore the negative sign over here. Okay. So, therefore, since uh, the line is symmetrical, so therefore, therefore the Thevenin equivalent impedance from the midpoint to the receiving end of the line of the line of the line is also equal to J Z C tan beta L by 2. Okay. Since the line is symmetrical. So, 
So, therefore, we can draw uh, redraw this line like this, this is sending and bus, this is receiving and bus and this is the midpoint where we have kept this SVC. Okay. So, what we have seen that that uh, if we look at this from this midpoint to the sending end side here voltage we know V at an angle delta here voltage we know V at an angle 0. So, 7 n equivalent resistance uh, from this midpoint to the sending end side is J Z C tan beta L by 2 and here also it is J Z C tan beta L by 2 okay. and both the lines are in parallel. Uh, um, if you look at from the midpoint, if we assume that this voltage and that voltage are short circuited, okay. we, we, we consider this to find out the uh, 7 n equivalent uh, impedance. So, therefore, so net 7 n equivalent impedance will be J Z C tan beta L by 2 in parallel J Z C tan beta L by 2. So, which is equal to half of J Z C tan beta L by 2. So, that is what the Thevenin in equivalent impedance. Okay. That is what the Thevenin equivalent impedance. Now, look at we already determined the Thevenin equivalent voltage, we also now determined the Thevenin equivalent impedance. So, therefore, we can convert this circuit to a Thevenin equivalent form. So, we can convert so this circuit in Thevenin. equivalent form will be something like this. Again we consider this is a uh, balanced three phase circuit we are this is of course, the single line diagram of this uh, this this uh, three phase transmission line. So, I am also drawing the single line diagram of this 7 n equivalent form. So, this is 7 n equivalent voltage this is 7 n equivalent impedance and this is what this SVC bus where the SVC is placed. Okay. Now, we know that this is equal to V 7 n, this is Z 7 n okay. and this is the SVC bus. Okay. Now, here we have the SVC connected. So, here we have the SVC connected. So, this is what let us see uh, SVC or we, we generally can represent this SVC in terms of a uh, variable susceptance the way we do. So, this is a variable susceptance B SVC and that is the representation of SVC. Okay. And usually what is done is that by using by varying this susceptance of this uh, SVC. So, this is basically represent the SVC by varying the sus uh, susceptance of SVC, uh, we will be maintaining the voltage at the SVC bus to a desired value that can be a constant value or that can be within a allowable range. This we will see. Okay. And what we will do is here, uh, this is basically representing this V SVC, it measures the V SVC bus uh, voltage and here we have some comparator where we will feed this V reference voltage and then we will have the appropriate controller it is uh, this controller and which will be used to adjust this SVC uh, susceptance that is what the main task is. Okay. So, this is what the Thevenin equivalent form of the symmetrical long transmission line where this SVC is placed. So, once we determine this Thevenin equivalent form, so this is Thevenin equivalent form 
of SPC compensated transmission line and we will be using this 7N equivalent form to, to describe the control functionalities of the SPC. Okay. So, that is what it is actually. All right. So, that is what it is actually. Now, one thing also I tell that uh, what would be the relationship of this 7 n equivalent voltage with this uh, SVC voltage. Suppose voltage at this bus is V SVC, V SVC okay. and current drawn uh, by this is basically I SVC, current drawn by this is basically I SVC. Okay. We have separate load that load current and SPC current are basically different. We have separate load, but here we whatever uh, the current drawn by this SPC that I am writing over here. Now, if we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law KVL rather by apply KVL what we will get? We will get the equation VTH or VSVC, VSVC that means voltage across this SPC bus. So, this is equal to V T H minus Z T H I S P C. Okay. So, where uh, this V S P C is voltage at the S P C bus or the point where S P C is located. VTH represents the Thevenin an equivalent voltage of the line equivalent voltage of the line okay. and ZTH is basically Thevenin equivalent impedance of the line seen from seen from SVC bus. Okay. So, that is what the thing is. Now, this is what the KVL equation. If you look at this, this 7 n equivalent circuit, if we apply KVL, so this is the voltage or 7 n equivalent voltage source. So, this subtracted by the drop happens at the 7 n equivalent impedance will represent the uh, voltage at the SVC. Okay. So, V T H minus this I S V C multiplied by Z T H will represent the V S V C. Now, the question is what would be the phase difference of V S V C and V T H? So, since we already assume that this uh, S V C is lossless, we already assume that S V C is lossless. So, therefore, what would be the uh, this now, phasor difference between V S V C and I S V C. So, if V S V C represents V S V C at an angle 0, then I S V C will represent I S V C at an angle plus minus 90 degree or pi by 2, okay. plus minus 90 degree or pi by 2. And Z T H is already as we know it is having some J operator. So, it is having some magnitude uh, Z T H magnitude along with uh, this 90 degree phase shift is there. So, that means there will be J operator at the Z T H, there will be J operator at the I S V C as well. Uh, now, when we have multiplication of two J operator, it will give you J square that is minus 1. So, that means uh, this will be this particular quantity will be having same phase with the V S V C. So, therefore, uh, we can see that this V S V C, V T H and Z T H as I S V C will be in same phase. Okay. So, therefore, we, there is no need of the phasor representation. We can remove this phasor representation because they are in same phase. Okay. So, therefore, we can write since V S V C V T H and I S V C 
multiplied by Z T H are in same phase we can write we can write the following equation which is this V S V C is equal to V T H minus I S V C Z T H. Okay. So, this we can write directly. Okay. So, why we, we can derive this without having this phasor relationship because they are in same phase already I have explained in the last page. Okay. So, once it is done then next uh, th thing is to understand the control characteristics of SVC. So, let us discuss the control characteristic of SVC. Now, what is control characteristics of SVC? Again, we go back and plot this V S V C I S V C characteristics, which is already taught in the S V C module uh, in very detail. Okay, and this plot looks like this. We have a absorption limit. We have a production limit like this. This is absorption limit this is production limit this axis is representing this isvc this axis is representing vsvc okay and as we know that this is absorption limit this is production limit okay so, this is the zone where it will operate as a inductive compensation this is the point where it will act as a this is the zone where it will act as a capacitive compensation. Okay. And this inductive compensation can be little bit of extended suppose this is what the our reference voltage is this is our reference voltage is this is this point is rep representing V reference. So, above this V reference they are uh, this inductive compensation or this uh, absorption limit can be little bit of extended and this range is called overload range. load range okay. and from here to here this range is called control range of the SVC. This range is called control range of the SVC. Okay. All right. Uh, this range is called control range of the SVC. Now, what is what do you mean by the control range? The, the significance of the control range is uh, that uh, within this particular range if this SVC is operated it can effectively maintain the midpoint voltage constant at the reference voltage okay, according to this characteristic this flat characteristics. Okay. So, uh, if your system characteristics fall within this control range of the SVC then it will be able to maintain the constant voltage at the SVC bus or at the midpoint of the line wherever the SVC is placed that is what the purpose of the control range. Okay. So, suppose this point we consider point O this point we consider point B this point we consider A point A this point we consider point C then what we can write is O A is representing slope representing maximum capacitive 
compensation. So, that is basically production range, production limit. Okay. O B basically representing slope or O B representing this slope representing maximum inductive compensation. So, that is absorption limit. Okay. And B C is basically representing overload range. The in maximum uh, uh, inductive compensation, uh, considering that this inductor or reactor can uh, withstand certain amount of overloading, then we can extend the control range up to this, up to B C. So, this is basically representing overload range and this A to C is basically representing or A to B, A to B it is basically representing the control range, range of the SPC. So, this is what the control characteristics of the SPC, these characteristics already we have seen in case of TSCTCR, in case of FCTCR, in case of MSCTCR as well. Okay. And uh, when we have uh, you know uh, TSC or fixed capacitor or even MSC that is mechanically switched capacitor, then only we will have a uh, finite amount of uh, production limit in addition to the uh, this TCR absorption limit. Okay. Now, from this characteristics what usually is done this control range is not considering as a flat, rather it is considering having certain amount of slope. That means, instead of this A B flat characteristics, the characteristics is considered to be this A dash, B dash and then we have this usual uh, this range. So, usually the control characteristics of SBC is represented that. Now, what is the difference of these characteristics to these characteristics? Here you can see that this A dash, B dash a dash b dash uh, consider consider a certain amount of amount of slope in control characteristics in control characteristics so this slope is having some important functionality and why it is so I, I will explain in the next lecture. Okay. So, keeping this slope is having some important functionality instead of uh, keeping this SBC voltage constant at this V reference, we are accepting certain amount of slope. When you are accepting certain amount of slope that means, we are accepting certain amount of voltage deviation plus minus certain amount of voltage deviation with respect to suppose this is V reference. So, this is some amount of voltage deviation del V reference and this is some amount of de voltage reference minus del V reference. Okay. So, we are accepting certain amount of over voltage and under voltage at this SVC bus instead of keeping it constant always okay, within the control range and that is why this we are accepting certain amount of slope. And what is the advantage of this? I will explain in the next lecture. Okay. So, once you do so, then we, we can write the uh, control characteristics equation as S V S V C is equal to V reference plus I S V C multiplied by excess, where excess is rep representing the slope of control characteristics. Now, if we consider, if we consider flat control characteristic 
respect to x s is equal to 0. So, therefore, V s v c is always equal to V reference, okay. V s v c is fixed to a constant value that is V reference. If we consider there is no slope that is fat characteristics which I have drawn earlier like this, okay, the fat characteristics. But if we accept certain amount of slope, this is what the control characteristic equation, okay. There are many advantage of having this slope I will discuss in the next class okay, or in the next lecture. Now, we have two equations one is this another is that both are representing this V S V C. So, from these two equation we can write V T H minus I S V C Z T H which basically represents uh, this equation. Okay. This equation if we equate with this equation then we should write this is V reference plus I S V C x s. Now, since I S V C and I S V C are common in the both side, so we can bring it together. So, what we can write is I S V C multiplied by Z T H plus x s is equal to V T H minus V reference. Okay or I S V C is equal to V T H minus V reference divided by Z T H plus X S. This is a new equation I got. So, this is another new equation we got. We will be using this to find uh, to, to establish a certain relationship and we will also discuss the advantage of this S V C placement and that we will discuss in the next class. Now, another thing that we should know from here is that we determine this uh, V S V C. So, this basically control characteristics of S V C is basically V S V C versus I S V C characteristics. Okay. Now, we also have the Q S V C versus V S V C characteristics. Q is representing the reactive power. How would be that, that characteristics? So, to find that, what we have to do is, we know that, we know V S V C is related to it I S V C and V S V C. So, I should write rather I S V C is equal to V S V C V S V C. Okay. So, where I S V C is the current drawn by the I S V C, uh, this S V C, V S V C is the S V C susceptance, V S V C is the voltage at the S V C. So, let us write higher. I S V C is current drawn by S V C, B S V C is the S V C susceptance and V S V C is voltage at the S V C bus. Okay. Now, the reactive power drawn or delivery of the S V C will basically equal to Q S V C which is equal to multiplication of V S V C and I S V C. Okay. Now, you can see this I S V C can be positive can be negative. We consider uh, this a negative sign in this particular equation to bring this capacitive current or capacitive compensation current in the left hand side of the uh, control characteristics and the inductive compensation current to the right hand side of the control characteristics. We are ignoring this over here just to get a mathematical relationship of this Q S V C. Now, here you can see 
that uh, if we multiply this V S V C with I S V C, so uh, this Q S V C characteristics will be V S V C V S V C square. Okay. So when you have so, then how would be the plot of this would be? In fact, you may consider this is negative. So then this would be also negative. This would be also negative. But you know that when uh, B S B C is neg uh, positive, B S B C is positive when it is a capacitive compensation. B S B C is negative when there is a inductive compensation. So therefore, the same equations will hold. Now we know this is a straight line relationship passing through origin. This is already we explained uh, in this characteristics as well, and we also ex have explained in previous lecture. So, in reference to that, these characteristics will be varying proportionally to the square of the voltage. So, therefore, the characteristics will be something like this. Okay. So, this is suppose the control range, this is support the control range. control range this is you know this is equal to q s p c this is equal to v s p c okay and this is suppose the p reference okay this is suppose p reference okay so this is what the change of this control curve so this basically represents q s p c versus v s p c characteristics. So, which can be understood from this equation. Now, as we know this B S B C is positive uh, in capacitive range. So, therefore, uh, Q S B C is negative. So, this is what the uh, maximum production limit. Now, similarly this, this is what the maximum absorption limit. Okay. So, this is one thing that we will learn. Another thing I will uh, discuss before I finish this lecture that is from this ISPC uh, characteristic plot, we know that V S P C in terms of the control characteristics is basically V reference plus I S P C multiplied by this excess, where excess is the slope of the control characteristics which I explained over here. So, excess is basically the slope of the control characteristics, okay? slope of the control characteristics. So, therefore, if I put uh, this uh, I S P C expression from this particular expression, so what would be the modification? of this control uh, characteristic equation. So, that is V reference plus V Thevenin minus V reference divided by Z Thevenin plus excess multiplied by excess. From this what we can write? So, denominator we have Z Thevenin plus excess numerator would be V reference multiplied by Z Thevenin plus V reference multiplied by excess plus V Thevenin multiplied by excess minus V reference multiplied by excess. So, V reference multiplied by excess and would be cancelled out. So, this would be equal to, so we can write V S V C will be equal to V reference multiplied by Z Thevenin plus V Thevenin multiplied by excess divided by Z Thevenin plus excess, Z Thevenin plus excess. This equation would be useful in deriving the some of the equations which uh, would be useful to explain this this SPC characteristics in more detail uh, manner. 
uh, by doing so. Okay. So, this is what an important you know equation that we will be using in the next lecture. So, in the next lecture what we will see, uh, we will discuss what is the reason behind having a finite slope or finite value of excess or non-zero value of excess in a control characteristic. This is one thing that we will discuss. This is uh, having an important idea behind it. Uh, in there is an important practical consideration behind this. There is a an economical consideration also behind this. Those things I will discuss. Also, I will discuss this the significance of these equations and this equation as well. In in particular, determination of this uh, power flow, uh, which are going to be changed due to the SBC placement. Okay, so that is these things also I will discuss in very detail. Okay, in the next lecture. Till then, let me thank you. Uh, for your attention in today's lecture. Okay. Thank you very much for joining once again.